How's it going everyone? This is MimeLank, welcome back to my channel and it's not exactly a date of significant or distinguished importance for you to remember, but the Maxwell GPU architecture just turned 3 years old in February of 2017. There's still an abundance of 9 series cards on the market, especially the very famous GTX 970, a card that was very popular but is now almost forgotten in favor of the newer cards from AMD and Nvidia. But has this GPU aged well and is it a good graphics card to buy used? We are going to find out together. Technically, this card is only around two and a half years old. Maxwell launched with a GM107, the chip you can find in, amongst other graphics cards, the 750Ti, while the first Maxwell GM20X GPUs, including the 970, launched in September of 2014. Nowadays, when we talk about the mid-range GPUs, we talk about the GTX 1060 and Radeon RX 480 and 580. But this doesn't nullify, however, the fact that the 970 is still topping the survey charts on Steam Hardware Survey. According to them, the typical modern gaming PC is still rocking the GTX 970 even after so many many months after its release. How is that relevant right now? Well, you see, not everybody is building new PCs and getting shiny new RX 580s and GTX 1060s. Some have very tight budgets and if they can, they'd like a solid 1080p experience in 2017. Here's where a used 970 comes in extremely handy. Almost no one talks about this GPU anymore and the majority of testing for mid-range cards is centered around the two actual GPUs from Nvidia and AMD. But what some of you might not realize is how damn close and powerful an overclocked GTX 970 that you can get used for as low as $120 with typical prices around $130 to $140 can actually be. And this is just asking prices before haggling with the sellers. There's certainly things you will lose compared to buying a GTX 1060 or RX 4 or 580. For instance, VRAM. The 970 comes with 3.5GB of VRAM in opposition to the stated 4GB, an issue discovered right after launch and for which Nvidia paid for literally. On the other hand, the other two cards come with 6GB and even 8GB for the pricier RX 4 or 580. You also get higher power draw and heat output. I'm using the MSI Gaming X which is a very good aftermarket card and while it is very quiet, the temperatures on all my other parts were 5 to 6 Celsius higher and the PC noisier since the CPU and system fans were spinning faster. A used 970 also likely doesn't come with warranty. But all of this fades away when you're budget limited and saving 50 to 70 dollars is simply much more important. I tested all three cards overclocked. It was the sensible choice considering that we want more GPU horsepower and this price range. The 1550 MHz clock on the 970 is nothing astounding. I've played with three 970 cards so far and only one stopped around 1530 MHz with the best one getting 1585 MHz this gaming X. I also used a Ryzen 1600X CPU overclocked to 4.1 GHz and paired with 2933 MHz RAM running CL15. Understand that I would have opted for faster RAM, but sadly, my 1600X is just simply unstable with 3200 MHz RAM, despite throwing in high DRAM and SOC voltages. Since I decided to retest the old 970, if I went ahead and tested this card in older games, well, that wouldn't be very informative. So the oldest game here is around September of 2016, with the bulk of them not older than 5 or 6 months. I think you're going to be very surprised to see that an overclocked 970 will hang in there with the other two overclocked cards just fine. It actually only falls short in the X12 games, but that was to be expected. I should mention that there's an inherent compromise you'll have to accept with this card, the lower VRAM quantity. Some games just need more than 4GB for ultra textures, so you're stuck with the high setting. For those interested in buying a used 970, however, this is just nitpicking, I know, especially since you'll most likely not be able to tell any difference between the two settings. I also skipped the frame time analysis on this video simply because these cards are generally so well balanced in power that you wouldn't be able to tell them apart even with a frame rate counter. I did generate a few graphs but they're so close they're overlapping, a thing you can see from the 1% and 0.1% lows as well. Testing was done with ultra settings in these games and here's the reason. If there's good performance on ultra, there's obviously much better performance from dropping settings to high, but seeing this card pull in excess of 80 FPS in some titles is just priceless. 
I will also let these benchmarks serve as updated GTX 1060 vs RX 480 testing. We haven't done these in a while and I don't know when we'll be able to have them again since the AIO on my RX 480 is dead, fortunately not the card. Obviously the stock cooling solution I'm back to doesn't let me go beyond a reasonable 1340-ish megahertz which is still well below the 1470 megahertz I usually ran on this card. Well, you've already gotten a sense of what the 970 is still capable of. What's interesting in some of these tests is the fact that sometimes the 970 is getting higher 0.1% and 1% lows than the 1060. Nothing earth shattering that would require a deep analysis, but it is of importance that this car will not chug or dip compared to its newer competitors. I also ran Superposition on it, so this is as fresh and updated as you can get, alongside Outlast 2 which just launched. And as you can see, this got us again really nice performance for a card that's almost 3 years old. As for the RX 4 and 580 and GTX 1060, well, these cards are still extremely evenly matched, so much so that you can't go wrong with either choice, to be fair. Alright, so am I advising people to go out and buy a new GTX 970? No, if you have the money for the 1060 or RX 580, those are better choices due to reasons stated in the beginning of the video. More VRAM, less power draw and significantly less heat output, better DX12 performance and last but not least, warranty. If the extra dollars you save on going with a used 970 is important, then you'll not regret the choice. And here's another possibility left to explore. Unlike the 1060, the 970 is capable of SLI. So if you're lucky and can get two cards for the price of a new 1060 and are okay with running SLI, then you're going to get 1070 or above performance. One thing the 970 did and still does compared to the 1070, the card that is its successor, is pricing. The MSRP on the 970 was from the beginning $10 lower than even the cut $349 the 1070 is at from March of this year. And if you think about it, the 970 offered previous flagship performance, the 780 Ti, just like the 1070 did with the 980 Ti. It just goes to show what happens when you have proper competition, and I'm referring to the Radeon 2XX series that Maxwell was battling at that time. I certainly found this interesting and I honestly didn't expect the 970 to hang in so tight. If you didn't either or are rocking a GTX 970 or planning to buy a used 970, let me know in the comments down below. I want to see your questions and suggestions and don't forget to check out my Twitter and Patreon page linked in the description down below. Thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing and see you next time everybody, bye bye.